The Nuts and Bolts of Writing, Season Two, a podcast where we talk about literature, the ins and outs of writing, and how to actually start writing. Hello, everyone. I am Ah and Rovale, one of the co-hosts of the Nuts and Bolts of Writing. Today, I will be interviewing writer Peggy Payne about her newest book, My Life on Earth and Elsewhere. Peggy Payne is the author of four novels. Her sister India was a New York Times notable book of the year. Revelation was a New York Times book review editor's choice. Winner of an IPPY for Visionary Fiction and the Sherwood Anderson Award, her novel Cobalt Blue is probably the only book ever simultaneously featured on a Playboy radio network program and in the top 100 spiritual books for Kindle. All of her fiction deals with a play of spirit in the greedy, ordinary and extraordinary physical world. Payne is also co-author of self-help book The Healing Power of Doing Good, a literary guild selection. Before turning to books, she published widely in magazines and newspapers. Family Circle, Cosmopolitan, Miss Magazine, Travel and Leisure, Coastal Living, Publishers Weekly, The New York Times, The Washington Post, and most of the other major American newspapers. She has worked at Duke University as a scholar-in-residence and visiting faculty member on NC Public Television as a live-on-air reporter and commentator and as a travel writer publishing stories from more than 25 countries. Hi, Peggy. It's uh, really great to have you here. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here, Arian. You just released a new novel entitled My Life on earth and elsewhere and uh first of all congratulations this is really exciting thank you yes it is exciting for me for sure <laughs> <laughs> right um it is a young adult story with a 16 year old protagonist called darcy which is interesting because your previous books uh, like sister india cobalt blue revelation are adult fiction and uh they uh, feature heavy themes and very mature experiences So what inspired you to write a young adult book? I did not know I was writing a young adult book. (laughs) (laughs) I was just writing a story. And um, actually, I'm getting um, lots of response, a good response from adults about it. Um, It contains both a young adult story and an adult story, the daughter and the father. Um, And when I started writing, I... Well, it has it has the an out it begins with an out of body experience and there's a, a strong supernatural element in it, as there always is in my fiction. Um and my first thought was I'd like to have an out of body experience. Um and so and I did, just decided on this sixteen year old girl, uh, who probably had been waiting for me for a long time. <laughs> but um I I, I didn't think I was writing uh, uh, a young adult book. It was also the first novel I started writing. I mean, I've published three novels since I started writing this one. Um, and uh, it uh, it has germinated over 43 years. <laughs> uh, wow. So maybe, maybe I was uh, still uh, closer to 16 when I started writing it. But I still am very close to 16. That's, um, I just seem to contain my, my original teenager um, com- complete in all the details <laughs> and available. Uh, so uh, th- I guess I sounded like a 16-year-old uh, when I started writing her point of view. Um, and it wasn't until I got an agent that she said, oh, this is young adult. I was startled. <laughs> wow, I see. So it almost came as a surprise to you as well. <laughs> Absolutely. It was a big surprise. And uh, it, it still, is, though it does have, uh, I, I don't know, some uh, young adult editors have felt that there was some adult in the void as well. So who knows? Uh, I, I, I don't think that way when I'm writing. I uh, I just am writing the story and am 
inside the character and in her experience. It's really fascinating, the story behind uh, your book um, and uh, the fact that you have been working on it so much. I think that you have put a lot of soul into it, given that uh, it stayed with you for so long. It it stayed with me a long time. I didn't I didn't work on it steadily, obviously, for 43 years <laughs> since I had these I wrote these other books in the interim. But what happened was um that when uh when I first thought I was through and the agent sent it out, um, it got um it, there was one editor in a major house who was interested. It was at Viking, and uh and she said well, I, you know, I would like to do this if you will take out the supernatural material. Well, that was kind of the point for me. Um, I, I didn't know what was going to be left that, uh, that had a lot of plot to it. And I was so interested in the supernatural. At that time, there was really no such tag as um, paranormal romance uh, or paranormal even. Um, you know, there'd be a little in a bookstore, there'd be one little shelf that said occult. Um, and it, there just wasn't a sub genre then. Uh, and I could, I just couldn't see taking out half the book. And so I said, no, thank you. And, and I eventually put it aside while I was and worked on these other things. Um, and finally I got back to it and it still, it took a long time after that. Um, it, it, you know, when you, uh, let a few decades pass, um, it, you, my tone changed. <laughs> I had kind of outgrown my original draft. So, um, uh, while the events, many of the, well, the beginning is very close to the same, and um, the major events, many of them are, are exactly the same, but it's still, it's still evolved with me. Has it uh, undergone a lot of changes? It well, it, yeah, I did do, I did do some changing. I and well, I was more confident of the supernatural material uh, when I came back to it later. Uh, it, I made it. Uh, it, originally, it was turning out to be something like something she'd imagined in the story, and um, the, I, I did not want to stay with that. I wanted it to be her real experience, so that's what I made it, and that was the biggest change. And that uh, I would I would be sorry if it had come out with with without that change. Right, of course, of course. I think that the fact that you started the novel uh, so many years ago also helped in uh, the way you were uh, created Darcy as a protagonist because uh, uh, your age was closer to hers at the time when you got the idea and uh, you made her a very relatable character. So how do you approach creating relatable and authentic teenage characters? I just... Uh... I, I I don't I don't know exactly. I I just start writing, and I I know her. Um, I think it's probably contacting myself at that age, uh, feeling things I felt, um, and how would I have felt about this and that? I mean, it's it's not autobiographical, obviously. <laughs> I have. Uh, I lived on earth, not elsewhere, but, um, uh, and she does, you know, she does venture out, um, from, from the, the familiar and, um, I just, uh, kind of take on her personality, um, like an actor and do what she would do, feel what she would feel. The, I mean, the way I, I think about writing any character's experience, um, when I when I've taught, I've, I've the, the little memory device I've used is the word toads, you know, like hopping frogs. Um, the things that that to for the an acronym for the things that I that that I consider tools for ex inhabiting the experience uh, of a character, and it's thought, observations, actions, dialogue, and sensations. And, you know, when I, when I fill those things in, um, there she is. 
and um, and, and I, you know, I'm having it's the thoughts of this 16 year old girl in both crisis and both in an extraordinary adventure. Right. That, that's his. I can explain it. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so, what are some of the main themes that you have tackled in this book? I only know this after the fact uh, because I don't think about themes while I'm writing. I think about the moment the character is in. Um, there's the same themes I've used in all my adult novels as well. Uh, spiritual search is uh, is the big the big matter, um, uh, it, that that was true. Well, my first novel was about a minister at a liberal church who heard the voice of God, and the people in his uh, his congregation thought he needed therapy. And that sounds like a joke, but it was uh, it, it was a realistic, you know, serious story. And this story has has also the spiritual search in it. Uh, it's just um, that she's uh, she's visiting the other side, and uh, so that's that's pretty different. Uh, and my second novel was uh, Sister India was uh, set in uh, Varanasi, India, and you know it featured the power of the Ganges as a holy river. Um, and I spent three months there doing research to do that. Um, uh, and um, actually, Cobalt Blue is about Tantra. So they're all wildly different, but they're all dealing with spiritual search. And um, uh, Darcy is is searching because her family is falling apart. And she really had uh, no sense that that was coming. So um, it's a different situation, but again, it's uh, what is, what are the what is the world that's unseen? Um, you know, there are things visible and things invisible, and I and I'm very very curious about the things that are invisible. So I keep hunting uh, and putting myself through these uh, experiences vicariously. Um, also, I think. In this one, I get, even though my novels seem like they were heavier themes, I feel like I dealt with um, even, maybe even heavier stuff in this story that has a lighter feeling. It it does feel uh, light and it's funny in places and, um, and, you know, and it's youthful, but it's dealing also with with life after death uh, and um, a human heartbreak uh, more, I think, than, than my other books maybe, or more directly. Uh, so while while I um, I do view it as my lightest story and and most warmest, um, but at the same time, it's got you know it's got this meat to it. I've been having bookstore signings um, because, you know, because this, the stars, the, the astral zone is a huge piece of the story. Uh, I've been kind of celebrating the theme of sparkle and stars. Um, so I send out uh, to book signings um, invitations that say, you know, come join me for a sparkling hour and I serve sparkling water and I put up fairy lights um, and I, I, I have to uh, gold crowns and stick on jewels and stuff like that for for the people who come um and uh lighter than air cookies which are meringues and i i've actually come to think of the book has a kind of a meringue feeling to it because it's it's light and it's lighthearted a, a lot of the way um but i also think it has kind of a chewy center <laughs> i think that's in there Wow, I see. I see. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense because yes, uh, uh, in in essence, uh, it deals with very uh, uh, deep themes, even though uh, it is more youthful, so to speak, than uh, than some of your uh, other stories. So, um, how do you think you balance entertainment and storytelling with uh, addressing important issues or conveying meaningful messages in uh, this young adult book? So, in in the context of a young adult novel. 
either in adult or young adult. I don't uh, I don't think about messages as I'm writing. I don't set out to well, I don't set out to do it consciously, but I know it's always going to be there. The, the spiritual th- search and um yeah, what the possibilities are and how they affect who we are in our daily lives and that sort of thing. I I, I cannot avoid that. Um uh, my one of my novels I thought was going to be um, my last, most um, the one before this is Cobalt Blue. I thought was going to be kind of a lighthearted romp, uh, uh, sort of sexy and very light, and and a, and a, just a break from my from my, my seriousness. And that did not turn out to be the case. <laughs> it really <laughs> didn't. And I thought no matter. No matter what I think I'm going to start doing, I, I come back to doing this stuff about uh, uh, searching for our spirits, and so I don't, I don't think, I don't think about it as I write. I just start writing a story about a person with a problem to solve, and um, and what are they going to do? Um, and I, I think actually that's the only way. Uh, I, well, I can't speak for other writers than myself, but I don't think setting out to convey a message works uh, for most for most writers. It becomes, uh, I think, it becomes labored and didactic and tedious, <laughs> and, and it's just not hold a reader. People want stories, most of them. Right, right, yeah, and uh, and it's really interesting that you say that because I think that for a lot of people, um, young adult uh, fiction comes with, uh, um, I guess, expectations of a sort of uh, educational purpose uh, or messages uh, because it is directed towards younger people that uh, um, are uh, just uh, uh, starting to uh, to understand life and to have certain experiences. Experiences. So, um, um, do you think that there is more pressure on a young adult writer when tackling sensitive topics and more censorship in this sense? Uh, so, in the way that you are tackling certain themes, do you tackle them in a different way in in a young adult book uh, than you would in an adult book? Yeah. Um, I well, what what I did. Uh, you know, I didn't know I was doing it, so I went about it just the same way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, I didn't feel pressure about that kind of thing. I did feel in the fi- in the end, I, I became aware of the things that are not politically correct, words that are not politically correct to use, and that's that's a very hot thing in publishing now. Uh, um, you 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 don't want to. Um, uh, offend people who are upset by were you know different the wrong label for something and it, it there was um in the first few pages of an earlier draft i i talked about her thinking about uh the crazy neighbor uh who lived a couple of houses away and um you know he did he have some problems but uh, i was told that, that crazy was not a good word to use um, so, uh, I made him extremely odd, <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, and people go over books now, um, looking for words like that, that are going to be, um, very controversial. Um, and, and there were a couple of others like that, uh, that I, I used, um, I don't even remember what those were, but, uh, I mean, crazy is a word I use just, you know. Uh, I think everybody does, but for some reason yeah. it's it's considered wrong to put it in a book, especially if it's a book for a young readership. So. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I was okay with changing that. I didn't have a problem with it. Um, I, I did, there was, um, there's a scene in there that uh, is, it's not, it's not actual human sex, uh, but it is a lovemaking scene. Um, and uh, I I did not want that to be human intercourse. Uh, that felt wrong for the character. 
Uh, it was just not, uh, she was, she was not ready for that. And, um, and she was ready for something delightful called lovemaking. <laughs> so that, um, I did that not, not so much thinking, oh, uh, it, will it limit, you know, will it keep me out of school libraries or things like that if I conclude this scene? Um, in, in a in a you know in more graphic and and human way, but I just didn't. The reason I didn't want that scene, uh, I wanted it to be the the thing that they actually did. It felt in keeping with their astral uh, selves, their their spirit selves, and um, I. So I that's what I would have done, no matter what the expectations were, um, and. If I had known earlier it was going to be why I might have felt some kind of pressure, but I I don't even feel like I'm a great uh, uh, well I'm no expert on YA books uh, because I fell into this one I'm not as widely read as people in in that area as a lot of people are who do this full time um, I'm getting more so uh, but but. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I was sort of a, a I don't know, a, a genetic fluke or something in the field. <laughs> and it's a beautiful scene, if I may say so, because I know what you mean. And uh, it's really interesting to uh, hear that uh, uh, you didn't write it the way you did because of um, uh, her age or because of some pressure, but because it made sense for the character and in the context that it happened in the book. And that's indeed the most important thing because it flows much more naturally than if you set out thinking, well, it should be like this and like this because of reasons. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I, I'm glad you like that scene. Uh, it, it's dear to me. Um, um, it, um, there was something, I don't know what I was going to say. There was something else I was going to say about that, but I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> Ask me another question. <laughs> yeah, we can surely get to that uh, later, uh, if you remember it. So, uh, well, on the topic of sex, because you mentioned it, uh, you know quite a bit about writing sex, right? Because, uh, well, based on your previous books, um, it's, after all, one of the main themes in uh, Cobalt Blue, and it features in uh, those others' novels as well. So what makes a good sex scene? Well, I think that is... Uh, as diverse as people are uh it it i i don't think there's any any standard to it um i mean you know there's the range of uh, erotica where uh it, it's very graphically detailed with a lot of body parts and um um and that that's what a lot of readers want um and and they're uh, you know, there's some that sex scenes that don't go well. <laughs> you know, they're they're really not a good not a good moment. Um, I I kind of thought about the um, TV series Girls. Did you happen to see any of that? No, uh, I haven't. Well, I stopped watching it because I thought um, it's about twenty somethings, um, and uh, and I kept thinking these sex scenes are the most depressing thing. Uh, <laughs> I just can't deal with it. I can't deal with this. Uh, their experiences, they, they didn't, in the part that I watched, did not seem to be very satisfying. <laughs> um, but I th I think a good sex scene gets across the the, the experience of the, the, the main character um, it, in its emotional impact. Um, and... Uh, and that person's perspective on 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 the physical experience, you know, just moving parts around is not not interesting. Um, but that person's investment in that, <laughs> you know, uh, what what their um, uh, what just what show their experience best as possible without it being technical writing. <laughs> and I'll tell you. Um, one thing that uh, that makes it easy for me is uh, I I've had the same feeling about writing about the supernatural and about downhill skiing. <laughs> now this 
this may not make sense, but but it's been very helpful to me. Um, somebody told me about uh, when you're when you're when you're skiing, if you hit a sheet of ice. Uh, I remember d- remembering this when once when I hit a sheet of ice, and I'm a very very occasional, timid, frightened skier, but I, but I love it. Um, I hit a huge sheet of ice and thought, oh, oh I'm going to die, um, and. Then I thought, remember what somebody has said, which is stick with your usual technique, you will be fine. Um, ah, I and, see. Yeah. yeah. And that cat, I stayed up across, I don't know, 20 feet of ice, and which felt life threatening. Um, and then, uh, and the same thing is true about writing a sex scene, it, which is. And the scene of the supernatural, when it's tempting to start saying that things are amazing and awesome, um, you know, and go over the top. Uh, If you stick with the usual techniques, which, I, I, as I said earlier about the toes, it was thought, observations, you know, those five. Um, As long as I stick with that, uh, I'm comfortable and it feels as real, uh, I think. I hope, um, as, uh, as other scenes. Uh, so I feel like I can slide naturally into those scenes and not feel, take a deep breath and think, oh, my God, uh, trouble's coming. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just uh, avoid the sense of a, a daunting challenge that way. I see. That's really interesting. And that's actually great advice. And it's uh, not only about sex, but about anything else, anything that's more, I, I guess, difficult than uh, than the usual, whenever you want to approach a more uh, difficult topic. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, uh, do you have a, a different approach uh, writing uh, romance or sex in young adult versus the uh, the adult fiction that you have written? I don't think so. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I thought back to my teenage years, uh, or I just reverted. Um, the intensity of of being that age, and um, you know, so thing, things being new, brand new, uh, and you don't know how it's going to go, and you don't know uh, have as much confidence to. I I didn't have as much confidence in myself in any way. Uh, so I, I think there's much more feeling of um, ooh, uh, walking along the edge of a cliff <laughs> and things being life and death important. You know, they and, and they're still life and death important, but as an as an adult, but you also know that um you know that you have experience where things have things have gotten better and worse and better and worse and um and and whatever happens um in your social life at 15 may not last forever (laughs) that's so true yes (laughs) right um, so uh, another important theme in uh, your books is the supernatural. So I want to ask you, what is the line between supernatural and fantasy for you? That's a really interesting question. Um, and I have uh, I have thought about that quite a bit because this is the first book that I've had that was labeled fantasy. My first novel, which was treated as a realistic contemporary novel, God is Speaking Out Loud in English in the Preacher's Backyard. Um, Is that fantasy or is that realistic? Um, My next novel is about a holy river that cures people's illnesses. That's a major religion, Um, just like the the preacher's experience. Um, It's a major religion, so it's not fantasy. Uh, if it were just me making up a river that could do that, it would probably be called fantasy. Um, I, so I think a huge number of people believing in something makes it not fantasy in the in the public world. Um, and 
this book, um, there's stuff in there that I don't believe. Well, it has never happened to me. And um, I don't know what I, I don't, I don't know that I believe in all of it in detail, but in some kind of big picture way, I think there's, it's possible. It's possible. One of the, one of the themes of this book, I think that I discovered after the fact, and, and the main character says it is, um, well, there's three of them, and I hope I can remember all three, uh, that almost anything is possible. Um, and that, a whole lot of good stuff can come out of bad stuff and that the universe is just flabbergastingly unbelievably interesting and so those i would call the big three themes of the book though you know they're not you wouldn't pull it out of any one scene and say oh yes this is the point um it, I've lost track of what I was originally starting to say, but that's that's the point of the whole thing. <laughs> that's um, really beautifully said. Indeed, yeah. And um, um, I, I really like what you said about the line between supernatural and fantasy because it's really blurry. So even though this was um, this qualifies as fantasy, I guess, uh, yeah. for, for the public, yes, I, I really see the difference between spirituality. It was always really poignant in your books, just that mm. now it's going in a different direction than the others. But it is basically still exploring someone's uh, um, spiritual maturity, I guess. Yes, yes. And and, and yeah, right. And there's their religious experience. Um and I mean, I, I'm treating this as a religious experience for her and her father at the same time is having a, a, a traditional religious mm -hmm. experience, a conversion to Christianity. Um, and so the, both of those are going on at the same time. And one is supposedly fantasy and one's not. Um, and, and I think that, um, that the fantasy stuff is if one person comes up with it, it's fantasy. If millions agree on it it's real um and, uh, <laughs> that, that may be um well there's a little glib but uh but there's some truth to it i think right great answer uh so what was the most challenging part about writing this book and how about the most fun part uh let's see The most challenging part about this book and every book is getting it into uh, the kind of shape that that uh, the commercial market seems to want. And I start a long way from that. Uh, I just write it how I want to write it. And um, I, I only make changes that I feel improve what I've done. But um, some writers have a natural ability to plot in a way that's very commercial. And that does not come naturally to me. Uh, and so I have to, I have to work at that um, and keep in mind, you know, how does every scene affect the big conflict? Um, what does the main character want in every scene? Um, not just kind of have some experience yeah. <laughs> or some nice writing or something like that. So uh, keep uh, draft after draft uh, to clarify plot um, is probably uh, that's the hard part for me. I as as I'm sure listeners know, there there are two kinds, two categories of writers: the pantsers and the plotters. Uh, and uh, the seat of the pants people, I'm one of those. Um, I envy the plotters because it saves them years. Uh, but uh, I can't seem to make up a plot before I, I have the character and I'm living with it. Um, and the fun part was just what happens. Uh, I, I, I loved um, the other world experiences. Um, and I'm not one who likes outer space type stories at all. Um, but the fact of a having a, a tree in 
in the backyard. Maybe I've got some about yet backyards now that I think about it. There's a tree in the backyard that um uh that is a thin place between um between this world and the next and that idea interests me um you know it, the uh spaceships fighting each other does not <laughs> i see what you mean <laughs> right uh so uh what advice would you give to aspiring authors who want to write young adult novels because now you are becoming an expert in young adult fiction <laughs> um Well, I would say be true to your character. Um if you're true to your character, uh and, and stay within that character, I think I think you've got it. Um there is plenty of adult fiction that has uh, um a a main character who's the is uh, who's a child even. Um but the the story incorporates the adult view of that child. or there's a there's a narrator who has stepped back and commenting or something like that skipping that um and staying within the kid um just true to the kid's experience and feelings um uh, and actions i think that does it um and it, it, there's there's such a um well there's a fine line i mean there is somebody uh, a writer i know uh David Guy who just had uh, a new book out Hank Heels and uh this one was um he writes spiritual novels and um in nonfiction um this this one was classed as an adult book but two or three of his earlier books were called young adult and he wrote them all in the same with the same intent and way uh and it's a marketing marketing decision to a great degree where what shelf it's going to be put on um so you know there's there's just a i mean i talked my publisher and i talked about how to categorize it and i we agreed that teen fantasy was the the best uh place it's also true that more adults read young adult novels than do young adults um <laughs> and so um i'm not sure how much the um I'm not I'm not sure how how much the label means but I have been recently just finishing a book that's a biography that is also part memoir of my own about a mystic that has also become sort of my spiritual memoir um and my tone is different it is not the same tone that's uh that, that is in my life in earth on earth and elsewhere uh you know I, I'm writing about a woman's whole life and I'm doing it as a 74 year old um and I do not sound 16 <laughs> and that just happened naturally I, somehow or other the, the 74 year old voice came out um but so I I think a great deal of this just happens in the course of the of doing the work those are excellent answers thank you so much Peggy and um Well, thank you so much for all the advice and for sharing your experiences. Uh, this was fascinating talking to you. Oh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you, Arianna. It's been delightful. Thank you so much and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Goodbye.